These have been sitting out on the foredeck for almost a month. <laughs> so we're on the home stretch right now, trying to prepare to get to the Bahamas. Kirk. Yes. It's totally calm out. What is happening? It's time to either become a vegan or continue to be a meat eater. Oh, all right. Last time, we set to work sewing our bimini. Back in the boatyard, we had purchased a three-bow bimini kit from Sailrite. Before launching, we built the frame and created templates for the canvas. Now in Marathon, this was our last big boat project to complete before taking off to the Bahamas. This is the first time I had to rip out a stitch because I messed up. <laughs> it's starting to look like a... Bimini though. Yeah. By the way, the reason we decided to DIY this bimini is because of Sailrite's library of how-to videos. They make it possible for a novice to take on big sewing projects like this. My hair is ridiculous. Is it? Yeah. Well, we got about a week left in Marathon. I'm about two thirds done with the bimini. So once that's done, we can look for a weather window and we're free to go to the Bahamas. But we're also waiting on a new shipment now though that we just made last yes. night. That's I just ordered a birthday present. It was one of the saddest days when I had to sell all of my surfboards in San Diego. And I was the most sad about having to sell my paddleboard. So I just bought a brand new paddleboard and we'll be here in about five or six days. So we are going to have to figure out how to store a giant paddleboard on our deck. <laughs> but I think it's going to get us out on the water more and that's the important part. So now we're off to lunch. We're taking a break between sewing projects and, and there's a really awesome little cafe produce market just down the street. Oh, that's a rack of ribs. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down to the last couple steps of this bimini. I just finished sewing this backstay slit and attached vinyl underneath so it gives it a little bit of stiffness. The only thing left to properly fit it that I have to do is actually cut a slit for the radar post. Comes out right between these two zippers here, which if you have a look on the underside, looks like this. So the radar takes up this space right here. I think that's where we measured it. All right, well, let's figure it out. So what do you think? I think it's pretty sweet. <laughs> we double recording? Mm -hmm. I totally forgot about the rigid back supports and how they clamp onto the back bow creates a almost a half inch bump on the bow. So I've got to sew like a little pocket so that the fabric doesn't chafe on that and then wear a hole in it. Other than that, it's coming together. I think we did an okay job. Oh man, the mountains call my number one. I'm just a life-size lottery. Two fifty. What do we need? Three fifty. Yeah. All right. We were warming the oven for this, a gift from our friends Jordan and Randy of Learning the Lines. Live lobsters, of course, come with a string attached. It's almost killing time, bird. We are going to kill our first living creature to eat tonight. Ourselves. Ourselves. Ever. Both of us were raised with meat as part of our diets, but not much thought was given to where it came from. As adults, we've become more conscious about the food we're eating, and we skew more vegetarian than not. But as occasional omnivores, we think knowing what it's like to take the life of a creature you're about to eat is an important experience. We're both a little tense. We both have primed ourselves with cocktails and uh, also prepared the seasoning. <laughs> Copious amounts of butter. Lots of butter and um, occasion style mix. But Kirk, you should tell about how this is something that you wanted to do for... About 10 years ago, I said, 
I was not going to eat anything that I couldn't kill. That was a goal of mine, was to eventually kill everything that I planned on eating. At least once. At least once. Yeah, yeah not at, I wasn't going to solely live off the land. Yeah, but. so, you know, deer, fish, pig. <clears throat> I think cow would be pretty tough. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to go to a slaughterhouse one day and press the button. Really? Press the button? That's the, the little cattle killer. It the, shoots a rock. I feel like that's getting off really easy. Yeah, well. My thought was this. Can I look this creature in the eyes and take its life? And if not, then I should no longer be eating it. The two little lobsters that we have in our cockpit right now. Calm as anyone can be. Okay, we're making this way to... Awaiting their fate. Stop it. <laughs> God. All right. We're going to go kill our food so we can eat. Because our stove is about to be... Yeah, it's almost up to 10. It's time to either become a vegan or a continue to be a meat eater. Oh, all right. Here we go. You ready? Yeah. Thank you very much for becoming lobsters and letting us eat you. You're going to provide life-sustaining nutrients for me and my lover. Okay, ready? Okay. Here we go. I'm just going to be quick, okay? Okay. Okay, we're going to spare you the gory details here. No doubt, some of you may think that we're making way too big a deal of this. And others may wonder, how could we possibly do this to another living creature? We don't want to get into a huge debate about whether eating meat or seafood is acceptable or not. Everyone has their own beliefs. We just want you to know that for us, this was a big deal. You okay? Yeah. That was traumatic. <laughs> just, you know, just stab it through the, in between the eyes and no big deal. I think we did it right. If our freezer was large enough, or if we had enough ice to make an ice bath, we would have preferred to chill them first. They're low-level uh, nerve systems. What, what is that? What's your... Yeah, right. So that they, they react even after... Yeah, they twitch. It was a learning experience. All right. Okay, what do we think? That's pretty good. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. I think we did it. Okay, what are we having with this? I forget. Oh, some naan. And? Oh, I don't know. And what? I don't know. Another drink. Thoughts? I think I've had lobster maybe twice otherwise in my life at a restaurant. I don't think I've ever had it. And I honestly don't remember, like, loving it. And we might have overcooked it a little bit. I don't know if it's good enough to make me want to go out and try to catch a lobster and then kill it again. But I think we need to have properly cooked lobster before we can make that determination. So lobsters, you are spared from us until we find someone who knows how to cook you. <laughs> I think I like the stone crab better because you just rip off their claw and then they go about their business. <laughs> makes you think about the food that you're eating, I think. Because it's not just a package in a store. And it makes you think about what you're doing when you eat it. I feel like we might feel a little bit different if we caught them ourselves. Like if we were actually on the hunt we would have experienced the other side of the whole catch and cook your own meat, I yeah. think. That's the other thing too, is that if it would have been any other sea creature, it already would have been dead because that happens when you catch it. Why are you saying that? What does it mean? It means that lobster is the only thing where you could experience getting it gifted to you and not having to hunt it and then having to kill it Got yourself. It. Got it. Not the only thing. Someone, wow. Someone what? could have gifted us a cow. I know, I'm talking about sea creatures. Or a pig. Again, seafood. We live on a boat. Someone had a chicken gifted to him. <laughs> he sailed around the world with a chicken. Yeah, he didn't kill it. It was his pet. With the radar pole cutout finished, we can now take measurements for the placement of our solar panels. These have been sitting on the foredeck for almost a month. <laughs> so see, these can't get so close to the we wanted them fairly the close to the center line, but not so close to each other that the cables overlapped the neighboring panel. I can just velcro them. So we're just about to get started on one of our last days of working on the Bimini. Kirk's going to be helping me attach the panels today. 
we decided to go with Velcro on the top and bottom edges of the panels, which would be secured to the bimini via Velcro-lined pockets. So I've just cleaned all of our panels with isopropyl uh, to get any sticky residues or oils or anything off of them. And what we're doing is I'm going around and applying Velcro to the top edge of all of the panels. This stuff doesn't have any sticky back, so we're using some Velcro adhesive. It's for plastics built specifically for this Velcro. The other tape that we have for some of the wider sections does have a sticky back. So we've got two different types of adhesives. We're also doing two inches of Velcro in the corners on the bottom. We're hoping that one of them sticks well enough. <laughs> We're hoping both of them stick well enough. I'm working on the last of the side strips that are gonna roll over and be the top Velcro. And actually also the bottom Velcro will be in here eventually. These had to be specialized because they're the ones that are gonna be on the side that have the wires coming out. So yeah. The hot knife actually stopped working a couple days ago. Um, it wasn't getting hot enough and it was not cutting the fabric. And I got really worried because I was just about to start cutting 16 of these strips. The most of all the material that I've been cutting so far. The benefit of the hot knife is that it quickly and efficiently cuts the fabric and seals the edges so it doesn't fray. If I didn't have this knife, I would have been totally SOL. The problem was is that these screws had come just slightly loose and there was no way to tell that. I just happened to look it up online and someone had the same issue where their knife wasn't getting hot enough. Luckily, I didn't even need a screwdriver and I just hand tightened them and all of a sudden, it's back to cutting. So. All of a sudden, it's back to cutting. All of a sudden, it's back to cutting. It's so light. Holy crap. Wow. Feel how light this is. Whoa! It's like a straw. Yeah. This is gonna go on our boat. <laughs> Happy birthday to me. Yay! <laughs> I've never actually purchased a brand new surfboard before. All of my boards have been used or I shaped one of them. So this is kind of like a super special treat to actually get a brand new surfboard. I'm super pumped about this board. I'm really excited to ride it, and it's gonna take up a ton of space on our <laughs> boat, but we gotta have some fun once in a while, so. Sweet as. I figure they've been lasting at least eight trips to and from the boat. I think we've been getting three days out of them. So yeah. between six and eight. Yeah. But yeah, so far we've been charging it 100% on solar. We've charged one of these batteries once on 120 volts. The rest of the time it's been uh, off our 100 watt solar panel, which takes about three days in full sun or directly from our boat, which takes about a day and a half. And by a day and a half, I mean we plug it in when we get up and we unplug it when the sun goes down so we're not drying off the batteries too far. Yeah, I've been pretty pumped with the batteries. It's pretty awesome that we've lived 100% off of solar for the last month. I lied. We went out to the reef once and we used the diesel engine, but for the most part, we are creating almost no carbon emissions. I got my computer set up so that I can charge it. Off our house bank as well. We tried an off the shelf 12 volt charger, but it kept overheating. So I cut the cord and wired it directly into a 12 to 19 volt DC to DC step up converter. And then I added some more length to the cable so I could charge it anywhere in the boat. Um, yeah, I think, I think we have a pretty good idea of how much power we're using and we're making more than what we've been using. Um, the batteries have been topped up 
pretty much every day around noon. Um, and we only are using about 10% of the batteries on a, a regular basis. So when we have overnight sales and things, or when it's been cloudy for a few days, you know, we'll dip a little bit lower, but I think we've sized everything pretty well. It's time to put the big screen TV in. Kirk. Yes. It's totally calm out. What is happening? <laughs> We're cleaning our water tanks. <laughs> we got something growing in our tanks. The water started smelling pretty bad. We haven't been putting any bleach in it when we fill up. What did you read that it might be? Coliform. A type of bacteria that's a lot of times found in poo. <laughs> mm. But it's the most common type of bacteria. We are trying to eradicate it from our water tanks. So we're siphoning out the water tanks and dumping it right into the bilge instead of pumping 60 gallons through the kitchen sink faucet, which requires the water pump to work nonstop. We figure the bilge might be a little bit more robust. Right now I'm dumping out the second water tank that we had just shocked with bleach. So after this, we've got to refill up the tanks, empty them out again with a whole round of fresh water, uh, no more bleach and then we fill them up again and hope that they're ready to be drank out of. <laughs> put up the hair to put up the bimini? Yeah. It's business time, huh? It's business time. So we've been in Marathon for I think about five weeks now and we just finished the bimini finally this week. I think we've put it up, taken it down probably four or five times. Yeah, to test fit it yeah. and test other to little test bits the solar and pieces. Panels and and Kirk bought these nylon washers so we can prevent the frame from rattling so much. Um, they're gonna go in all of these connection points. Yeah, tonight we are gonna put it up for the last time. Definitely way more water than I thought. <laughs>